With Thanksgiving around the corner and everyone getting ready for those oh so wonderful family conversations, I thought I would arm you with this gem of a segment about Donald Trump and my friends, his terrifying plans. Huh. If you listen to MSNBC, you may have heard one of the scariest things imaginable. And uh, if you're a Democrat, if you're a Republican, you probably heard one of the greatest things imaginable. I'm half kidding, by the way. But let me give for all of you this segment from Morning Joe, where he makes some bold claims that Trump will imprison and execute people. I'm not kidding. This dude actually thinks that Trump is going to start just slaughtering his political enemies. Dude, the only people who actually went after their political rivals are Democrats. But, uh, uh, you know, let's just play the video. And the reason why we do this is because, um, well, Thanksgiving is around the corner. And I want you all to be <laughs> to be ready for this, because I guarantee you, for those of you with those liberal family members who watch MSNBC, oh boy, here is the uh, segment in question. Give it up for Joe Scarborough. Does it mean he won't do it? When he gets a chance to do it. He's and if he is well. voted into office, then a lot of these people that are talking about literal or figurative or whatever the hell they're saying, you're going to look like idiots uh, because he will do, he will get away with, he will imprison, he will execute whoever he's allowed to imprison, execute, uh, 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 drive from the country. Just look at his past. It's not really hard to read. The only, again, the only thing that stood between him and the destruction of American democracy was the federal judiciary. You mean the lies? No doubt about it. And no doubt about it, ladies and gentlemen. Look at this from the New York Times. Trump's dire words raise new fears about his authoritarian bent. The only thing that stopped Donald Trump, they say, was the federal judiciary. Do you mean when Democrats fabricated a fake story that Donald Trump was secretly colluding with the Russians, that the election had been stolen in 2016, and that we needed to get to the bottom of whether or not Donald Trump was a secret Russian agent? You people lost your minds. Hey, I'd like to give it all to everyone in 2020, to all the people who thought that Donald Trump was secretly the president and would be reinstated on, in March because the United States was incorporated. Y'all lost your minds. But hey, far be it for me to tell you what's real. I don't know. Everybody's got their claims. I can only tell you this. You know, the world's gone wild, man. It's, it's absolutely wild. And this next year is going to be absolutely insane. While one thing that was stated by Joe Scarborough is true. A Colorado court ruled that Trump did engage in insurrection. But he can't be disqualified because he is not an officer of the United States, which is a weird thing thing, but OK, and I think this is the point where this is all headed. They need to plant the seeds to remove Donald Trump from the ballot. It won't be so simple. They can't just go out there and be like, yeah, Trump's gone. They need precedent. So what do we get? Minnesota and Michigan, the judges say, nah, you can't take Trump off the ballot. Really great arguments on the part of Trump, actually. States do not have the right to determine eligibility, only the federal government. The federal constitution determines who is eligible to be president, and therefore it is a federal judiciary question, a judicial question, not a state one in which Michigan and Minnesota were like, yeah, we can't take him off the ballot. In Colorado, however, they said, well, he's not an officer of the United States, but he did engage in insurrection. And this is the path. What's likely going to happen now is there's going to be other states that cite Colorado and say he did engage in insurrection. Colorado already said it. But they don't agree that he's an officer of the United States. Well, that's wrong. This will not stop. It is not Donald Trump who did anything. He didn't even bring in the National Guard to stop the riots. And let him happen. Many people argued that during the Summer of Love riots, the worst riots we'd seen in 50 years, in 2020, many argued Trump should have brought in the army. Tom Cotton wrote an article about it. Editor at the New York Times got fired for publishing the article. Trump didn't do it. The argument, was that it the argument was that if Trump did bring in the military, they would say, this is it. Trump is deploying the troops. He's targeting the American people. So he didn't. And what happened? You ended up with widespread violence and crime. Could have worked out if the Trump campaign played that angle a little bit better. Then what do we see with January 6th? Trump 
should have called in the National Guard. But he didn't. Why? If Trump called in the National Guard on January 6, they would have immediately run the story in all the press. Trump is mobilizing a coup. His supporters are storming the gates, and now he's ordering the, the military to come in and secure blah, blah, blah. They would have said a military coup is happening. What would have happened then? Even if Trump instructed the National Guard to allow the electoral vote to continue, the media would have framed it as Trump is deploying the troops and his supporters are attacking the Capitol, and then they would have imprisoned him instantly. So Trump didn't. Trump instead went to the Democrats and to the mayor and said, you guys got to get the National Guard out here. And they went, nah, they're not going to do it. They wanted Trump to do it. Trump would be locked up in a military prison, in my opinion, if Trump ordered the National Guard to be deployed on January 6th. They would have said it's a military coup. And what would have happened to all of those guardsmen who followed those orders? It would have been bad. It would have been bad. In fact, if Trump really wanted to play dirty, he could have done a bunch of other things. In fact, Trump could have ordered at any point the National Guard to actually attack him. That's right. He could have pulled an Erdogan. Trump could have had, through various actors, the National Guard come and actually try and arrest him. He could have then come out and said the Democrats are staging a coup, could have blamed the troops, but he didn't do anything like that. That's silly. Why would he? I think they would have done it to him. Here's what the New York Times is claiming. Trump's dire words. Oh, boy, here we go. Auto autocrat experts, autocracy experts are, are so concerned. Let's get it, baby. The New York Times writes, Donald J. Trump rose to power with political campaigns that largely attacked external targets, including immigration from predominantly Muslim countries and from the south of the U.S.-Mexico border. But now in his third presidential bid, some of his most vicious and debasing attacks have been leveled at domestic opponents. During a Veterans Day speech, Mr. Trump used language that echoed authoritarian leaders who rose to power in Germany and Italy in the 1930s, degrading his political adversaries as vermin who needed to be rooted out. You know why I really, really love this line? Because it was the Democrats who referred to Trump supporters as maggots. And they've been doing that for years. Trump comes out only recently and like, oh, oh, he's calling people vermin. The people you called maggots? Dude, like I can tell you, the conflict is escalating. But to act like these people are standing on any kind of moral ground is laughably absurd. The threat from outside forces, Mr. Trump said, is far less sinister and dangerous and grave than the threat from within. And he's correct. This turn inward has sounded new alarms among experts on autocracy who have long worried about Mr. Trump's praise for foreign dictators and disdain for democratic ideals. They said the former president's increasingly intensive focus on perceived internal enemies was a hallmark of dangerous totalitarian leaders. Wow. All of those things could be applied to Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton. Obama is a deranged and evil individual. He is the worst president this country has seen in my lifetime. I give a special uh, res reservation for Woodrow Wilson, but Obama may be one of the worst presidents we've ever had. And I'll tell you why. Obama, he lied. He cheated. He stole. Obama prosecuted more journalists and whistleblowers under the Espionage, espionage Act than all of other presidents combined. The attack and affront to free speech was, was, was massive. The expansion of the woke cult and these policies implemented by Barack Obama. DEI, the expansion of the wars in the Middle East, Libya, Syria, etc. The extrajudicial assassinations, assassinations of American citizens. Abdurrahman Alalaki, a 16 year old American citizen who was killed in a drone strike in a country we are not at war with. Obama outright murdered a child. That's not an exaggeration. Abdurrahman Alalaki, a well known story. Obama murdered a child. Anwar Alalaki was a jihadi. Still, he was an American, and you can make your arguments, but he deserved a trial. Obama blew him up. Then his son, who committed no crime, who was at a civilian restaurant in Yemen. Obama killed him. Obama signed the National Defense Authorization Act of 2012, which included the indefinite detention provision, allowing, though they will argue, their right, the government's right, to capture, detain any individual anywhere even an American, without charge or trial, and hold them indefinitely. They could send you to an offshore military rig and hold you there against your will without you having committed any crimes. Thanks, Obama. 
And they say, remember when the only scandal was a tan suit? I don't know. I thought the murder of a child was a scandal, but I'm understanding why the media didn't want to report on that one as heavily. But yeah, now tell me about all of your fears about Donald Trump. Pathetic scumbaggery. Scholars, Democrats and anti-Trump Republicans are asking anew how much Mr. Trump resembles current strongmen abroad and how he compares to authoritarian leaders of the past. Perhaps most urgently, they are wondering whether his rhetorical turn into more fascist sounding territory is just his latest public provocation. On the left, an evolution in his beliefs or the, uh, or the dropping of a veil. There are echoes of fascist rhetoric, and they're very precise. I'm going to pause right there and just let you know the left is fascist. By every definition. Uh, come on. The lucrative merger of corporation and state. They have that. Oh, and they say, oh, but that's not what real fascism is. Okay. The, the, the uh, socialized enforcement of, um, let's slow this down. Let's say social pressures and norms used to dictate economic policy that the Nazis did. The Nazis played the game. And the reason why people are like, they weren't really socialists because they used market economics, but they used social coercion, hmm, cancel culture. I was reading a great academic article about how the Nazis enforced the uh, market mechanics they desired. Because they would go to like a steel manufacturer and they would say, are you manufacturing things for the war effort? You're not. Do you hate this country? Are you a bigot? Are you a racist? I'm not saying literally. I'm saying figuratively. They would go to them and use social pressures and cancel culture. Why aren't you building things for the war effort? Why aren't you supporting the Nazis? The rainbow flag by the LGBT community, the pride, uh, uh, progress, pride, uh, pride, progress pride flag, flag. Same thing as a swastika. I'm not being cute. I'm not exaggerating. The swastika was long used by people all over the world as a symbol of um, prosperity and good fortune. If you look back at antiques from the early 1900s, you'll see swastikas everywhere. Much like the rainbow, it was a symbol of fortune. The, the rainbow represents gold at its end. It represents a spring warm day. It represents prosperous, beautiful springtime. The swastika at the time did as well. But now the Nazis uh, have turned it into something grotesque and vile. And it doesn't mean that anymore. When the Nazis came to power, they were flying the swastika flag, a symbol of peace, harmony and prosperity. They inverted it. They corrupted it. This is what the left does with the rainbow and all and every in, in the same way. And people look at the rainbow and they're like, oh, you can't possibly think a rainbow means that. Take a look at any antique store with carrying it carries antiques from the 1900s. I went to an antique store in Austin, Texas. They had swastikas everywhere. And the guys who worked there said, don't care. This meant something back then. And that's what these antiques represent. They don't represent Nazis. And I'm like, oh, it's kind of crazy to me. But this is what they're doing now with the rainbow flag. They are Nazis. And don't forget, they hate Jews. Seriously, they hate Jews. Let's not be cute. The far left, the woke cult, believe insane anti-Semitic conspiracy theories. We saw this with the Women's March. We saw this with Black Lives Matter. We saw this with Black Lives Matter pushing outright anti-Semitic conspiracy theories about the slave trade and banks and all this other crazy garbled nonsense. Now, when Hamas attacks Israel, they're now singing the praises of Hamas, these far leftists. No joke. But it's Donald Trump who's the dangerous one. They say Mr. Trump's shift comes as he and his allies devise plans for a second term that would upend some of the long held norms of American democracy and the rule of law. These ambitions include using the Justice Department to take vengeance on his political rivals. Full stop. They're already doing that to him and many others. How many Trump people have been arrested and charged who didn't actually do anything wrong? Plotting a vast expansion of presidential powers, which is what Obama and Biden have been doing nonstop. Sure, spare me. And installing ideologically aligned lawyers in key positions to bless his contentious actions. Quite literally what Democrats have already been doing. The only problem I have is that Republicans aren't fighting back hard enough. Mr. Trump's allies dismissed the concerns as alarmism and cynical political attacks. Stephen Chung, a campaign spokesman, responded to criticism of the vermin remarks by saying, if it came from reactive liberals whose sad, miserable existence will be crushed when President Trump returns to the White House, Mr. Chunk did not respond to requests for a comment on, for the article. Some experts on authoritarianism say that while Mr. Trump's recent language has begun to more closely resemble those used by Hitler or Mussolini, he does not quite mirror fascist leaders of the past. Still, they say he does exhibit traits similar to current strongmen like Viktor Orban of Hungary or Recep Tayyip Erdogan of Turkey. Mm hmm. Sure. 
Mr. Trump's relatively isolationist views run counter to the hunger for empire and expansion that characterized the rule of Hitler or Germany or Mussolini. Oh, so you're saying that it's more aligned with like Hillary Clinton and Joe Biden? Next question. As president, he was never able to fully wield military power for political purposes. Uh huh. Meeting resistance when he sought to deploy troops against protesters. No, he just didn't do it. It's too simplistic to reference him as a neo fascist or autocrat or whatever. Trump is Trump. And he has no particular philosophy that I've seen after four years as president, said former Defense Secretary Chuck Hagel, a Republican who served in President Barack Obama's cabinet after 12 years as a senator from Nebraska. Still, Mr. Trump's campaign style is damn dangerous, he said. He continues to push people into corners and give voice to this polarization in our country. And the real danger is that if this continues to bubble up and take hold of a majority of Congress and state houses or governorships, there must be compromise in a democracy because there's only one alternative. It's authoritarian government. No, there isn't. There is cultural homogenization. When uh, we win and we are winning and we push out the psychotic woke left cult through uh, politics, culture and market economics. That's just how we'll do it. They will cry and they will scream and they will pray and they will beg and we will say, don't know, don't care. We will not allow these groomers, these corrupt narcissists, these arrogant elitists to have any say. And how will we do that? By just saying, go away. There doesn't need to be tribunals. There doesn't need to be arrests. There should be some arrests for some people, for sure, criminals. But for the most part, we're going to say, we are not interested in spending money on your businesses. We are not interested in electing you. You are not invited onto our shows. Thank you and have a nice day. The idea that Donald Trump needs to go and beat people and arrest and detain. No, it's a bit silly, but some people, it will happen. I do believe what we need will be criminal charges for the criminally corrupt. I want to see the Democrats who engaged in the false Russiagate hoax arrested and charged and that we do need to correct this country so they can cry all they want. The Washington Post says voters must take Trump seriously and literally the stakes are that high. Trump may be a performance artist, but with his shocking provocations, he is telling us what he would do in a second term as president. That's why taking him seriously and literally is required because all of these people know they're criminals. The reason why they can't allow Donald Trump to win is because many of these people are guilty of crimes. They took the money. How many of these people went to Epstein Island. Epstein then said, we are going to destroy your life or you're going to play ball. How many of them are on that list? And not just Epstein, but just a criminal a criminality in general. How many of these individuals took the bribes, played ball, and know if this machine comes crumbling down, they will be destroyed? You see, they're fighting for dear life. They should be excised from polite society, these criminals and the corrupt. Donald Trump should weed them out. And now Stephen Colbert makes Grim Reaper joke about Joe Biden's age. I don't care about Colbert. I don't care about these jokes. What I care about is the fact that even Colbert recognizes Joe Biden cannot be president. But I'm pro Biden, baby. I'll, all the way. Joe Biden must be the Democrat nominee. And we got to support him and give him a chance for a second term. Why? The reality is he can't win. He can't win. And we know it. They're going to start coming after him. And they're going to try to replace him. And it will be disgraceful for him. But they know Joe Biden can't win. But I got to be honest, I don't see how, how Newsom wins either. Newsom has less than a year now to build the narrative of success. California is not successful. So what can they do? The only option they have is removing Donald Trump in some way. So pay attention to where this country is headed. Pay attention to what's happening all around you. I'll say it again. The only path forward to stop Donald Trump for the Democrats, it's not going to be Newsom. They need Trump off the ballot. They need Trump unable to run in any way imaginable. And they'll need someone to replace him. But I think many of these individuals would be happy with literally anybody else. With Iran DeSantis, you'll get negotiating on foreign policy. They're not going to let Vivek Ramaswamy come in, that's for sure. But I'm concerned about Donald Trump. After we had this Democrat go on TV, I think it was on MSNBC, and call for Trump to be eliminated. Yeah, now things are getting a little scary. You could argue that he meant, oh, politically, it doesn't matter. It's the escalation of rhetoric. You see, if they said Trump should be removed from political office or not allowed to run, we get it. But saying someone should be eliminated, we know what that means. That's a scary reality. 
if these people are publicly saying the only way this country survives, what they really mean is the only way their corruption survives is if Trump is eliminated. Do you think it just ends with politics? Donald Trump recently released a report that he's in great health. Something dark is coming. This country is in a dangerous way. And now they're going on MSNBC and they're trying to rile everyone up into believing that Donald Trump is going to create gulags or something when the Democrats are already already doing it and already have done it. So as we sit here and they claim that Trump will do all these things, but we know they've already done these things, recognize what they are saying, where they are saying we are at now. If they're arguing that Donald Trump is going to destroy democratic norms by doing things they've already done, they are telling you outright they are gutting this country and ripping it to shreds. And they're doing it on purpose. No, I'll tell you, it's really simple. It's probably because they're criminals, these politicians. It's probably because they know that if Trump gets in office, he's going to start cleaning things up and they will rot in a jail cell. So they must say or do whatever they can to make that not happen. But my friends, we're winning. So I hope you're excited. Next segment is coming up at 4 p.m. on this channel. Thanks for hanging out, and I will see you all then.